Hi, I'm John Covey, and I'm the creator of Linkage, a DNA card game. And I'm going to go over the rules and how to play. So before I start, I just want to make a note about the graphics. The graphics are going to be different in the final version. They'll be pretty similar to this, but we're going to have some major changes um, that make the game a lot easier to play based upon some feedback from some of our Kickstarter backers. So one of the things you'll notice first is there's two different types of cards. You have DNA cards, and here are the six different types that you have. And you have RNA cards, and here are the eight or nine different types of cards that you have. Now before we get too deep into the game rules, I want to show you what a proper DNA to RNA match looks like. So the top cards are your DNA cards, they start with your promoter card, and then you have cytosine, adenine, thymine, and guanine, and it ends with a terminator card. A proper RNA match for cytosine would be guanine, and that's represented in these cards by this blue and red gradient line. All right, setting up the game is fairly simple. First, we separate the RNA cards from the DNA cards. Now, we take our DNA cards and we set aside for just a second the promoter and the terminator. Now, the rest of these cards, we're just gonna shuffle up so they're all random. And then we're gonna take four of them and set them aside. Any four cards, set them aside, take the terminator card and reshuffle it back in so we don't know where it is. And then we're going to take the three cards from the cards we set aside and put them on top and put one on the bottom. Now what that does is it ensures the Terminator does not come up as one of the first three cards or the last cards. So we've dealt to every player four cards and now we want to start the game. The oldest player will go first and here's how a round goes. The first player to move, which is the oldest player, is going to turn one DNA card over and put it to the right of the promoter card. Now they're going to look at their hand and they're going to choose which card they want to play and then the next player is going to go and if there's three players the next player when it comes back around to the first player's turn again they're going to flip another card. And that's just going to continue. Every, all players will take their turns. The first player will flip the card again, take their turn, all players will take their turn and that'll keep happening until the Terminator card comes up. When the Terminator card comes up Play ends immediately, and then all players will try and score their points for that round. Now I want to go over the four primary actions a player can take during their turn and the two secondary actions a player can take during their turn. So let's assume this is my strand and this is my wife's strand. And what you'll notice is that both of my cards are correct because this blue matches up with the blue and that green corner matches up with the green. But with, with my wife, this card is incorrect, so we'll bring it down just a little bit so we can show that it's incorrect. And this green matches up appropriately. Okay, so the four things I can do during my turn. The first thing I can do is I can add a card onto my strand. So this red matches up with that red corner, or the cytosine matches with the guanine. I could simply lay that card onto my strand. Now it would be my wife's turn. This card right here is incorrect and she has a blue guanine in her hand. So she gets to decide between either taking that first primary action, laying a card on the end of her strand, or the second primary action, fixing her strand. So she could actually lay this blue guanine down there in, in replacement of that uracil, and that uracil would get discarded, and now she would have her first two cards correct. So there's the second thing she can do. Okay, the third thing she can do is mutate an opposing player strand. So if she does this, the card she takes from the opposing player must go at the end of her strand. So if here, here are her cards, she has a two uracil, a cytosine, and a guanine. She can take any one of those cards as long as they have an M icon and replace it with any one of the cards in my strand. But it has to, the card she takes has to go at the end of her strand. So she could take this uracil right here, mutate my strand, and then place that card at the end of her strand. Now if she decides to mutate my strand, I automatically draw one extra card from the RNA pile immediately. Okay, the fourth thing that she can do is called the DNA mutation. Instead of mutating the RNA strand, she could actually mutate the DNA strand. So now there's two ways to take a DNA mutation. She can either play her DNA mutation card and then gets to mutate the DNA strand, or let's assume she didn't have the DNA mutation card and she just had four regular cards. She can pick any two of them and simply discard them. Get rid of them. Now she picks up two DNA cards from the top 
of the DNA deck and she decides which one she wants to use. So she knows that this card is incorrect and she wants to fix it. So she's probably gonna pick this adenine since that adenine has an orange corner and that adenine is gonna match up with that uracil down there. So she takes her two cards, she decides to use adenine, she removes that cytosine, she places the adenine in its position, and now she picks up that card that she took out and she gets to choose the order of these two cards and place them back on top of the deck. So not only does she mutate the DNA strand, but she knows the order of the next two cards. So it's a pretty powerful move. And what you'll notice, because she's corrected this card, now that one is correct, but on my strand, it's incorrect. If you'll notice here, I don't have any of the cards I need to add to my strand. I need a blue guanine and I don't have one. So I'm, I'm always left with one option and that is to lay any card on my strand down face down. So just like that. Now at the end of the game, this card will score zero points by itself, but it will allow this whole sequence right here to be correct. So this is a correct strand of three cards or a sequence of three correct cards. Okay, so there are two secondary actions that I can take during my turn. The first one is a card trade, where I simply choose two of my cards, put them in front of another player, and randomly draw two of their cards. And the second is to discard any one of my cards in my hand, and then perform an extra action. So I could take two of my cards, and trade them out with any other player. Let's say I took both of these Guan in here, I give them to another player, and then I draw two cards from their hand randomly, and ah, those are the cards I have in my hand. Now, if I make that trade, I cannot discard a card and take an extra action during that turn. I'll have to wait to the next turn, or we'll throw another card out here. There we go. So now I've got four DNA cards out there, everyone's taking their turn, and now I have a choice. I can either add my guanine to this card right here, we'll scoot hers over, or I can try and fix one of these two, or I can do both if I take an extra action. So here's what that'll look like. Let's say I play this card right here, and now I wanna fix this card in order to give me a strand of three. So I have my cytosine here, I simply swap that out, and then I discard one extra card from my hand in order to pay for that extra action. You'll notice if we hold these up to the DNA strand, this blue is incorrect because it needs to be an orange uracil, but this green adenine is correct, this red cytosine is correct, and now this card, it counts as zero points itself, but it also counts as a correct sequence. What that will give me in the scoring phase, each of these cards is worth two points since it's correct. It's worth two points. This is worth nothing since it's not correct, so that's two points, four points, that's not worth anything by itself, but it gives me a correct sequence of three cards, which is an additional two points. So here I have two, four, and then six. I get that additional two points, not from this card itself, but because that card makes a strand of three. Now instead, if this was a uracil, that would give me a correct sequence of four cards in a row. If I have a sequence of four cards in a row, I get an additional three points instead of an additional two points for having three cards in a row. Now I can't collect both of those. I either get to choose to make this a sequence of three here or three here, and I can't count both of them, or I can choose to make the whole thing a sequence of four.